Do not buy Babylonian's Fall. This game is so filled with tons of microtransactions, stupid season passes, time-gated dungeon quests, and very, very busted combat. Every aspect of this is just so clearly untested, undone, and it's very confusing why they allowed it to release in this very obviously undercooked state. But I want to talk about that, and also some of the aspects of it that are genuinely good. What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here. Now, I've been playing this game for the last couple days because it's something that's interested me before it came out. This is actually the latest project by Platinum Games. These are the people that are some of the most famous crafters of amazing action combat. Think about the fact that their previous games, things like Bayonetta, Vanquished, or even something like Metal Gear Solid Revengeance, they clearly understand speed. They clearly understand just the fun of getting a 400 hit combo, and yet here, every aspect of this does not make sense. But let's begin with the setting, because that has got to be one of the most bizarre aspects of this. So in Babylon's Fall, we're playing as these prisoners, people that have been taken against their will to a tiny island, which has this huge temple at the center of it, called the Ziggurat. Now when you get here, they basically give you this backpack called the Gideon Coffin, which has a 95% chance to kill you, but if it doesn't just instantly stop your heart, it turns you into essentially a superhero. You now have the ability to basically weld any weapon, be able to float in the air, double jump, grapple hook, it makes you a very, very strong person. Now you probably think, well I'm a prisoner, I'll just escape. Well there's a cost to the Gideon Coffin, it slowly poisons you. Every single single person in this city is slowly dying off from the stuff called red sun sickness and so they got this amazing idea to get slaves to try and climb the ziggurat the first person who can survive climbing all the way up to the top and praying to the gods of the red sun they think the legend says will cure everybody in town so basically we are playing as those prisoners you get to make your own custom character and some of the customization options are a little bit weird and then once you're set you have to try and fight the different layers. Now, the whole crux of this game is basically going through the layers of hell. Each level is set in a different style of environment, from volcanic dungeons to huge sprawling ice zones, and even these areas that look like heaven, which doesn't really make sense. Now, I promise, these look like I'm outside. These are technically part of the ziggurat. Each layer is based on a different layer of Christian mythology. Now, that's pretty interesting, but the monsters themselves, here's where the story starts to really come apart. These things are called the Galu, and they're like big living suits of armor. Now, at first you kind of think, okay, are these machines? Are these magic? What are they? Well, it seems like these are actually other prisoners that have been corrupted over time. Either they've gone crazy from the Gideon Coffin, or the sun sickness has finally just eaten them from the inside. So now they're stuck wandering through the labyrinth, and we have to chop them down on the course of our mission. Now, the story itself is incredibly terrible. The writing is awful, but this brings me to the biggest problem I have with the game itself, which is the absolutely terrible freaking art. They decided to make this idea, which I'll give them credit, it's very unique. The entire game looks like a painting. Everything looks like this very smeary watercolors, which is very cool on the surface because at least it stands out, but the problem is that it makes the whole game look blurry. I recorded this in the most crisp of 1080p 60 frames a second. It's a very, very high resolution game, but it constantly looks blurry and blown out. I actually went into the settings just repeated times. I tried to basically turn down the brightness, mess with the HDR, anything to make it where it didn't look so freaking disgusting. Now, additionally, not only does the gameplay look incredibly bad, but this game clearly has no budget. When you actually watch the very terrible cutscenes with the just most cringe-inducing plot you've ever heard of, basically, it's just paintings. The characters are moving paintings. It'll be a guy like this, and then he moves a little bit. This is straight up, it's borderline not even animation. This is not any sort of fancy interactive cutscenes. There's no real dialogue. It's just people talking at you because we are a silent protagonist. So people just say, oh, we got to get to the next layer of the ziggurat. And then you go there. There are a couple big twists. There is one huge plot beat in this game that is the worst plot twist I've seen in any game ever. I'm not going to spoil it. 
Just imagine the stupidest thing that could possibly happen at the end of a video game, and you're probably correct. It is ridiculous that they thought that this was a good idea for a game in general. Just trying to fight through the layers of hell, that's pretty interesting. Other games have toyed with that idea, but doing that in this weird way where we're just supposed to be doing it as a team, it does not work. But now, let's dive deep into the combat itself. During the course of this, you've probably watched me doing quite a bit of big, flashy combos. I think I'm surprisingly good at Babylon's Fall, but it's also a game that very much sits in its own separate category. Now, this is an always online experience. You cannot play it by yourself. You have to actually connect to their servers. Even if you're just playing through the missions themselves single player, you better have a very solid internet connection or else you get kicked off. But how does it actually work? Well. The whole thing about your Gideon Coffin is it makes it where you can now wield four weapons at once. Now, that's actually kind of neat. It makes it so you basically equip a strong weapon, a soft weapon, and then two special weapons on your back. So, say you put like two giant bows on your back, a sword in your main hand, and a hammer in your off hand. This makes it where whenever you're doing combos, you constantly have to try and build up energy. This is not one of those games where you can just button mash. You can't just press every single key and every single attack and hope it all ends well. You have to be very, very centered on the idea of the longest combo possible, but you have to also be aware of using some unconventional combat at times. Basically, whenever you start doing a combo, say you start doing soft attack, soft attack, strong attack, then you're opened up to press your melee buttons on your back, L2 and R2. These use the weapons that are connected to your spine, but basically, these use that red bar of energy up there this essentially is like consider it a more interesting stamina bar this makes it where you can just dish out thousands and thousands of damage in a relatively short amount of time by chaining together the most impossible combo possible and if you do manage to actually chain this together properly you can stagger foes you can make it where they don't fight back you can break through shields it's an interesting idea, but there is a big problem with it. Once you get good at this game, even halfway decent, the entire game completely falls apart. But that brings me to the itemization system. This is by far clearly the most untested part of the entire game. Leveling up, getting new gear, managing to craft cool pieces of your arsenal, that's usually the most fun aspect of these games for me, because I do enjoy that grind. I enjoy trying to find and repeat a dungeon and do a daily quest. That way I get that next 1% upgrade. I do enjoy that, but in this game, Babylon's Fall goes so deep into the grind that it just becomes unplayable at times. But let me show you why. So as you start to beat these different layers of hell, you're going to notice a lot of different items dropping, which are the typical rarity scents. White items are not very good, green items are a little bit better, blue is kind of fantastic, purple items are incredibly strong, and artifact, the highest tier, is some incredibly omega strong stuff. But basically, along with having a rarity system, they each have a different level on them, basically allowing you to customize the strength, the abilities, and the enchantments on them. Basically making it so some of the enchantments will do stuff because these are randomized. They'll do things like making it so enemies just have their health drained with every single hit, or every time you perfect dodge, it'll make it where you can do an extra instant crit. The different ability of these weapons seems nice, but this brings me down to the itemization system because everything is based on crafting. You find a lot of these weapons, and some of them are half-decent, but after a bit, the only real way to get real improvements to your character is to go over to the forge, break down items, and make new stuff. Now, here's my problem. When you're breaking down items, a lot of them just give random crafting materials that suck. The good stuff seems to be incredibly rare. In order to craft a normal sword, just a standard half-decent blade that I'm going to use to fight off the forces of heaven and hell, this cost me 30 weapons. I broke down 30 weapons to make one sword. This translation rate seems to be very common as well, which is it seems like you have to play the game for five, six, or even seven hours grinding, stockpiling to try and make a decent set of gear. And I feel like that's the entire purpose of it. They want you to just stay logged in, to stay grinding, to try and unlock the next piece of outfits. Now, let me talk about cosmetics. 
for most of this, you're probably seeing that I look a little bit like some dollar store Iron Man looking ass. I mean, I don't know why I look so stupid, but the default character seems to look absolutely terrible. Your armor is just such a bulky mess. But I feel like this is intentional because they sell cosmetics. There is two separate battle passes, a free battle pass and a premium battle pass, which unlock tons and tons and tons of microtransactions. You can also go to the store. If you're trying to buy items, like in-game, you have to scroll past the in-game item shop with microtransactions to even buy stuff with in-game currency. They constantly shove so many microtransactions down your throat. And all of it is for outfits that also look terrible. I do not want to be a giant gold lion. I don't want to have biceps that look like they're just f constantly seething with space energy. It looks so ridiculous. Like, why are you making this Babylonian focused centered game with crazy combat and this cost to winning? Like, if you're going to have this heavy story about the Gideon coffin consuming your soul if you can't save your friends and pray to the blue sun... It feels dumb to then have the most ridiculous, outlandish, glowing suits just all over the place. The cosmetics look dumb, and they push them constantly. This is also attached to your Square Enix account, which is very stupid, because now it makes it where if you try and do buy anything or do anything like that, it, it makes it where everything is going through Square Enix stores. Now... Part of the reason this is just so frustrating to me is that actually I've played a lot of Square Enix games online. They have better online experiences. I will say that Babylonian's Fall, at times, it did make me smile. There are some references to stuff like Final Fantasy, which I'm completely obsessed with. There's a lot of nods to Nier, and I think all that stuff's very, very cool. But it made it where, after a bit, I, I seriously just sat there with my head in my hands wondering what was the point? Why am I doing this? What is the part of this that becomes fun? Randomized dungeons with randomized parties with no voice chat, no text chat, doing the same exact thank you emotes to hundreds and hundreds of people that I'm probably never going to see again is not my idea of a good time. Especially because I can already tell this game is going to die quick. I don't care that you're already showing off your stupid battle pass. No Nobody is going to be playing this game in a couple weeks. Nobody is going to keep grinding to try and just destroy gear and make new sets. Now, with all of my reviews of online games, I have to put this warning in it. If you watch this video in a year and randomly Babylon's Fall becomes great, don't get mad at me. I mean, I hope this game can improve, but as it currently stands, I think the combat is mildly interesting. I do think that occasionally when I unleashed a giant combo and beat somebody down or a boss is there and I managed to completely take them down fully solo, those moments do feel great. My problem is that at the end of the day, who cares? This game is such a bare bones experience. It's under 10 gigs. It's just such a tiny useless mess. I hate to say this, but there are better games out there. Play something that's actually worth your time. Play Diablo, play Lost Ark, play Final Fantasy XIV, now with a free trial. Every game is better than this specifically. I don't care what you play, but please, not this. Okay, we've heard a lot of bad and a little bit of good, but let's go over the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Babylon's Fall on the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5... A 4 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching this video. It has been a very painstaking process to beat another crazy crappy game. But onwards to the better projects. I love you guys very much. Please, if you could, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and also do me the biggest favor of all. And I'm serious about this. Keep dreaming. Oh, God. Oh, God. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.